everyone, and welcome fans and friends, my name is 8 Ben, and today I'm going to show off my Nintendo 64 collection. I'm quite passionate about the N64 and like a lot of people my age. I'm only coming 21 this year by the way, but I'm not saying there isn't that many people out there my age that cl don't collect for the N64, but it's not hugely common. But I think, I mean, this, this is my console here, I have just the ordinary grey one, because we really didn't get that many colours over here, and well... I think from memory I spent about 40 or so pound on this console alone so it was a bit pricey but I would say it was definitely worth it. I did take it apart and give it a clean. I think there's a screen missing somewhere around in there but so far it works perfectly so um, I think that's what's great about this console is it, it's also it's cartridge based you know I really love consoles that use cartridges because I feel like they're more rugged and they'll last a lot longer. I mean this thing is I think over 20 years old and it still works as good as the day it came out. And yeah, I kind of just realized this thing is basically as old as I am and that's crazy to hold a machine that's as old as I am. Again, I, I feel old, kind of, but I feel very young because of that, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we have my uh, Nintendo 64 controllers. There's a couple of different ones here and we also have the official ones. Now, you may not see it from this angle, but I've actually customized these a little bit, quote unquote custom, but I've kind of swapped the shells in them, just to show you like what that's kind of like. Um, I think I actually kind of prefer the grey with the red back, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, it kind of reminds me a lot of like Rob the Robot, and uh, of course, you're probably staring at this one in particular because you're thinking either I haven't seen that one before or I really want it and I don't really blame you because this one is ultra rare but also kind of ultra like expensive like it costs more than the console itself so um, sorry I know it kind of makes it sound like all I care about is money I actually am not like that um, but yeah so this, this controller is cool I've done two videos on this in the past so kind of browse from my videos until you find that Shouldn't take you that long. Um, and then we have this uh, Super Pad 64, which is not the best controller, it's not the worst controller. I don't like how much range the stick has. It actually kind of acts a bit weird whenever I plug in the rumble pack. So yeah. And I'll show you this uh, weird wire thing here, which you probably have no idea what this does, but you can actually plug GameCube games into this. Sorry, not games, but GameCube controller into this thing, and then you can plug it into the N64, and you can also reprogram the buttons. You can even reprogram the triggers. And if you want to get this thing, you can buy it from a guy. I think he's from Canada, and his website is called Rathnet. So that's spelled R-A-P-H-N-E-T. Very, very cool um, accessory, but very pricey as well. It seems like a lot of N64 stuff is pretty pricey. But this is all the controllers and stuff that I have and obviously you don't really need to look at the rumble pack and memory cards because they're just kind of standard affair. So we're going to move on to the last thing which is the games. Oh yeah and today I actually had gotten this bag and I kind of just want to show it to you guys quickly. It can hold up to six cartridges. I'm not sure what the other slots are for. And it can also hold the console and probably the controllers uh, in this one single bag. So I thought it's a really really cool thing to have. Of course here is my uh, N64 game collection. Not every single game here is by Nintendo, such as Star Wars Rogue Squadron, uh, let's see there's Toy Story 2, there's Banjo-Kazooie, and there's, uh, you could technically say Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, you know what I mean. Um, some of these games aren't Nintendo, but a majority of these are, and games like Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie are kind of essential to have if you have an N64. And yes, it actually at one point I actually did have Conquer uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, but I didn't really enjoy the game, so I sold it, you know, for some money because it actually does sell for a lot nowadays. But I kind of in a way regret that. But in any case, some of my most favorite games on the system would be, you know, Super Mario 64, Diddy Kong Racing, um, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, actually. Pilot Wings, I want to play more of that. Wave Race is the newest game I got today. Um, 
let's see, there's Yoshi. Yoshi's Story is a really, really good game. And again, all of these are amazing games, like maybe apart from 1080 snowboarding, although if you get used to the controls, I guess it can get a lot better. Um, most of these games are amazing, totally worth uh, buying, and totally worth, you know, spending your time playing them. Uh, I don't really have that much more to really say. I honestly don't have that much nostalgia for the console, if you're wondering that, because again, I, didn't, I actually didn't grow up with the console myself. And I kind of just kind of decided to buy the N64 since I was planning to own every Nintendo console except for maybe the NES and SNES. I can kind of leave those seeing as I have Retron 5. Oh yeah, and uh, I kind of made a thing where I don't really get boxes for my N64 games, but I do have this really, really nice box which I believe it came with a, a magazine called Nintendo 64 Magazine, that's literally what they called it. This is a cover for my Donkey Kong 64 game, and this is the only cover or box or anything that I have for any of my games, so um, it's pretty cool. Like, I'll just kind of show you the inside. I think I can hold a memory card and a cartridge, and that's really about it, but it's pretty useful anyway, I suppose. It's the same size as a uh, video box, so that's really cool. So, if you want to ask me, is it worth buying an N64 console to buy the cartridges and stuff like that? I would say if you don't have a Wii U or a Wii, I would say it's quite worth it. If you really like buying physical media, I would say go ahead and do it. Although some games could be really, really expensive, like Banjo Tooie and Super Smash Bros. and games like those are quite high in price and they're very close, if not more, than the console itself. So it really kind of depends on if you're a very dedicated Nintendo fan and you don't mind paying that much money for certain games. I think I'm crazy for the amount I've spent on certain games in general, not just for the N64, but like GameCube and, you know, stuff like what Wii U is priced right now is decent. But again, that's like kind of like paying for like brand new prices for used games and stuff like that. So I'm going to end the video there, guys, before I ramble much longer. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't come across this channel before, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and if you haven't subscribed please do ring the bell so that you get notified when I upload videos. <laughs>